So guys, I figured I'd come in here and just scan the Saturn real quick and see what kind of codes we have. We have quite a few codes. We got uh, body control module lost communication and manifold air pressure sensor circuit low. So I'm going to clear the code real quick. See if anything comes back. Clear them all. Let's go back in that engine. Try cranking it. See, your cranking seems a lot more consistent now. There still seems like one cylinder is low, but leaving it sit overnight seems to have made a difference. Let's go into data. Let's look at our data. Coolant 69. Seems a little low. But it should be cold. Map looks good. Our ignition voltage is low. Our ignition voltage should not be that low. We're 12.2. We're connected to my truck. I threw my truck on here just to charge it up a little bit from cranking it all day yesterday. And we got a 14.4 volt. Oh, is one of the connections bad? Oh, there we go. Now we're charging at 22 amps. That might have made a big difference. Yeah, now we're up to 13.2. I wonder if cranking it made it drop. But look at our auction sensor voltage. That's it. 510 millivolts. Okay, so the clutch pedal's working. Like, I also wonder if this is even getting any fuel anymore. I think I'm going to quick hook a gauge up and see if we got fuel pressure. I have a feeling this thing should start. Is this a, yeah, this is a return list. So I'll be right back. I'm going to hook a gauge up. So I hooked the fuel pressure gauge up. And we're reading zero. And I'll cycle the key. I don't know if you guys can see that. You can see the needle still at zero. Didn't move. Kind of hard to see. Try cranking it. Now our compression issue is showing up where it wasn't a couple seconds ago. So we have fuel pressure. It's weird that that one come on cranking. I smell a lot of fuel now. I guess we can go in the cylinder and look with the board scope, see if we see anything noticeable. 
So guys, I checked for spark. We definitely have spark on all four co coils. I just did a quick secondary ignition test. But we have no power at the injector on either side. Hey, this pink wire should have power and there isn't any. So, I'll have to check the fuse. Let me pause this real quick. See what. So, guys, I was wrong. It's fuse 16, 10 amp fuse that feeds the injectors. I was thinking it was uh, fuse 10. I hate reading diagrams off the computer, I'd rather print it out. But uh, fuse 10 looks good, and I tested it just by uh, touching my leads on. So I probed the harness down here on the black and pink, and there's no no power going through. See, it's dropping down. I just disconnected my lead up here. So what I did what I did was I put. Uh, I put a fuse jumper I made so these little alligator clamps work great from AES Wave for holding a fuse I have a fuse jumper somewhere but I had the red coming into here and in the black and then it's going to the post right here and now we have it's probably hard to see. We have 14 volts on it. Now let's start it. Well, let's try to start it. Let's see if it'll start. Oh, my laptop just fell. Uh, that's probably not good. like it survived. Wouldn't be the first one I killed, but it's running. We have an injector pole. Oh, well, not a pole, but a nice waveform. So I'm wondering if there's a, a valve issue along with a broken wire or if it was just an issue with them constantly cranking it with it not running or if they might have been spraying something in the cylinder. I'm going to let this run for a couple minutes see what happens. Oh, I should probably disconnect my my cables. We don't need them. So I'll come back in a couple of minutes. See how this works. So guys, I'm back with the car. I had to tighten down the coil pack. Then I have uh, one of the bolts dropped way down in the back. But this thing's been running now for like I don't know, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. So it probably does need a timing chain because you do hear quite a bit of valve train noise and when I started it it sounded like it. But I'm not seeing any issues that are that would cause it not to run though. At least right now. It seems to be idling pretty smooth. I guess we can look to see if there's any misfire showing up. have it in here. Oh there it is, I missed it. I'm blind. Yeah we're not we're not even showing any misfires. So I'll probably bring this in the shop then and I look for a broken wire. Let's say it's time out here. Let's 
So far so good. So guys, I got my Fire Pro ECT 3000 hooked up. Got to go into the Jumpstar post to the ground location that they say here. Which is this just a rusty bolt. And then I'm back probing the injector. So if you look, this thing will beep. And if I move it down to the harness down here, we'll get a beep, which is good. Because I had power there. But if I move, hard to do this on videotape. But if I do it over here, we get nothing on this whole harness going to the fuse box. And then right here is where it stops. Somewhere in here. So I'm gonna cut that harness open and we'll look right there. So guys, I switched it around a little bit. I realized going backwards it was feeding the injector wires for the drivers so that wasn't a good way to test so I came up here I probed this side of the fuse the one closest to the front of the car and it said short so I know that's not our wire we even opened so that's got that one would be going to I don't know if there's a relay or whatever but that's not the right way so we go to the other side and that says open. So then I was coming down here from the fuse box with it. And it was reading. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's reading. I followed this all the way down. And then right around here it stops. So I'm gonna take this open. I'm going to get this open right here. We'll see if we can find our issue in there. So guys, I believe right here is a damage section. It's bent really, really hard now that I moved it. It's making good contact. So I'll fix that then. And then we have good power down to here. I was able to light my headlight bulb. But we don't have power to here. I have this pin, which is the pink and black wire, I believe. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like pink and black. Yeah, pink and black. And then I have it going to my test light, which my test light goes to ground. You can see if I touch my test light here, it lights up nice and bright. But. Here it doesn't. So, and I did move this a little bit and it did light up for like a split second, so I don't know where the break is down here. Oh, you know what? That might be a good spot right there. So, I'm gonna pull this limb off and we'll move down and we'll try to break this circuit in half. See if we can narrow it down. Well, guys, I found the issue. I don't know how I missed this part, but that's pretty chewed through. So, I'm gonna get this fixed. And then I'll get that other spot fixed over there. And we'll see how this runs. What is that? It's mainly just a pink one that's chewed up. Thought maybe one of the other ones would be really damaged. That would probably make sense why when I bent this the one time, it made contact enough to light my test light. So guys, I fixed the harness right here. I ended up using one of the solder heat shrink, like book connector type things. I was going to add a wire, but I didn't see any reason to. Uh, 
it does light my headlight bulb. Got my headlight bulb here. This is going to the grounding stud. So, lights up real bright. And I can't get this to act up over here, so I might just let it go for now. Until I can confirm that that's the actual spot. And it wasn't somewhere else along here, but there definitely wasn't power going into it. Uh, earlier, because I had my piercing probe going right through the wire and there was no power coming from the fuse box, but when I added power it went backwards. What? I'll get this cleaned up. Then we'll take it for a test drive, I guess. Look how nasty that throttle body is. There's so much oil in there. I'm assuming it's oil, unless they were spraying something in it, but it looks like oil. See, look at it all in there. It's all like runny. So maybe there was more than just oil in there. So guys, I put new loom on it. I'm just gonna tell the customer to that. I think there might be a damaged wire there and if he has any issues, that's where it's gonna be, but I can't get it to act up again. But man, that is nasty. You may have a PCV issue. Uh, there's actually a small port in these plastic intakes right in the middle and they clog and they can call stuff like this. It's just like a fixed orifice for the PCV. Most people don't know that. And even when you take the intake off to do the gaskets, most people don't even realize it because it'll be so carboned up. You don't even know there's a port there. It's real tiny, you need to use a really small screwdriver or pick. But it's all limbed up. This is all new loom over here. Tape this side all up. Put it back together. Take it for a test drive. So guys, I got everything put back together. It's all looking good. I even clipped this wire back on the intake so that it doesn't rub. I think it rubbed on the alternator before. And we'll start it up. See how it goes. Let's see. Turn the scan tool on. Oh, you know what? I want to clear codes first. Let's see. cleared air check engine light there's actually 218,000 miles on here actually you know what we'll go under misfire data see if anything pops up I'll be right back guys I'm gonna pause this you guys are backing up Showed two real quick on cylinder two. So if we go for a ride around the block. We can't go too far, we don't have gas. I'm gonna pause this real quick again. I mean, I can tell you guys one thing: this shifter or the cables, 
They're completely shut. And these tires are way out of balance. pull the shifter cables or the shifters so hard to shift I can't even get into fourth look at my Zeus look how bad it's shaking I don't know if you guys can hear it sucks too because we can't even do like a volumetric efficiency test. I also wonder if maybe they didn't tie in a motor mount. Yeah, it has to be something with uh, like a mount or something not tight. Because it rattles with the clutch pushed in. that time. You know what? I experienced this vibration before. And it was after clutch drop on another car. They didn't, they didn't tighten the steering rack bolts. Oh man, guys, we're gonna have to turn around. We're gonna have to pause this because the road's closed, they got washed out. Okay, so I did the turn around. vibration everything the steering wheel the pedals
just wonder how much of this the camera is actually picking up with the vibration. Guys, I'm almost back at the shop, so I'm gonna stop the video here. I'll pull it back in, lift it back up, see if we can find anything that's loose. But as of right now, it doesn't appear to have a timing issue, obviously, because we're driving it. Even though I haven't really got on, it doesn't feel low on power. Uh, AC compressor bolts loose. The starter bolt was loose. Servicing belt's off, correct? Is this end link? No, this, this end link. This end link shot. That's it. Oh, the tires. The tires all shot. Steel belts coming through. The wires look smashed right there. shot too. I don't know if that's a rock or a nail. I found the steering rack. Look at the, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a gap. We tried tightening it up a little bit. Yeah, well I gotta return this and then I'll credit you for it. Yeah, but there's actually a gap. We might have got it tightened a little bit more, but this side had a gap too. I'll post pictures I took earlier. But both sides had a gap. And look at this tire. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's all bubbled. There you go, look at that. It's horrible. The bubble is only on one side. So guys, I'm going to do a follow-up with the Saturn. The customer picked it up today. Everything seems to be good with it. Now, I was talking to him. Got some more information. Pet Boys did a compression test. And they said cylinder 1 was low. And that's what, and the fact that it didn't start was why they said the timing chain jumped. Which doesn't make sense. Because if the timing chain jumped, all the cylinders would low, be low. Because it would affect all the cylinders evenly. I noticed that in one of my uh, waveforms, 
Uh, there was also another spot where it dropped down though. And I'm pretty sure what this is, is a sticking valve. But, I talked to the guy, and... I think he said Pepwise said something about a valve might be sticking. So I'm also wondering if they sprayed stuff in the intake. He said he didn't know all what they did. But I'm pretty sure a valve's sticking. And I guess he's going to be getting rid of the car soon. So I won't be able to tear it apart and find out. Unless, I guess something happens real soon. But he also did tell me that the car was in a... I guess an accident, you call it. He hit a huge pothole and it messed up the alignment real bad to where I guess he couldn't drive it. And that's why the tires were worn the way they were. And why that one has like a big bubble. And I guess he said that he had to take it to another place because they couldn't do an alignment the way the car was. I don't know. It wasn't making much sense. But I'm assuming if he hit a big enough pothole. That, uh, oh, they had to put two CV axles on because of the pothole. So I'm wondering if maybe the harness got damaged at that time too. Or when they were trying to fix whatever happened. So if he hit a big enough pothole, it's going to make stuff shift. And if you need a CV axles, probably bound them up. He didn't tell me any of this stuff before. I just figured I'd let you guys know what I found. And the car drove fine. After this, I didn't even have like any type of like hiccup where the valve would be sticking. Even starting this morning when he came and got it. It started right up. So I guess we'll just leave it at that. Hope you found it interesting. See you later.